what we have in front of us here today are three devices that all have something in common and that commonality is that they all use rubber drive belts or commonly referred to as rubber tape belts now what you have to understand is that some of these are over 25 years old as you can imagine over such a long period of time the belts inside them just completely disintegrate okay and if you get one of these that come in for a refurb right or you're trying to repair it and you need to replace the tape belt then you have to bear in mind that at the time when these were released the internet was probably not even around so there would be no digital copy of a service manual that you can get that would list the size of the belt that you need to replace the disintegrated belts with okay so they were I mean I've seen some of the service manuals for these and they were released as paper service manuals okay so there are some places that make copies of them and sell them and s occasionally somebody would scan them and uh, put a copy of it online and if that happens obviously you got lucky but if it didn't then you would have to take it apart and manually measure for that belt and the thing is it's not as straightforward as it seems there are a few things that you have to be aware of and that's what we're going to discuss and uh, we're going to show you in today's video after watching this video you should have the skills to replace just about any belt on any cassette player okay so the one that we're going to be working on today is uh, this one here it's a Panasonic it's a Panasonic dictation machine and it was purchased in 1988 so that's what about 34 years ago so uh, it's a uh, long due for a drive belt replacement so let's just put these to the side and uh, let's turn this over I've already taken this one apart because I've been working on it but I want to show you what it looks like on the back so if you have a look here we've got our driving wheel here and we've got our driven wheel here this black one here the belt on this machine has disintegrated and uh, we, we want to get a replacement belt we don't have a service manual and uh, we need to do this measurement manually so it's quite simple what you do you take a piece of string okay and you spin it round the driven wheel and the driving wheel right just like that and you go all the way around so what you do is you put it around the driving wheel and the driven wheel and wherever they cross you mark it with a black pen okay so I've already done this one and you can see here I've marked two points one point here it's too thin to see on the camera but there's a black mark here and there's a black mark here and what you do is you lay it flat get yourself a measuring tape and measure from these two points the two points the two black points and that will give you the length of the tape belt that you need but that's not the end of it what you then have to do is you have to minus once you've got that measurement from here to here in our case it's 12 centimeters you then have to minus 6% for the stretch right so let's quickly do that on the calculator so we've got our calculator here and let's quickly do that uh, calculation so if we do 12.00 minus 6% that gives us 11.28 centimeters or 112.8 millimeters okay and that is the length of the belt that we're looking for or that we need to repair our device but the thing is when you're gonna go looking for this belt you're gonna come across uh, some issues and to explain those issues what I want to do is I want to switch over to a little presentation that I've put together 
to help you understand what I'm talking about. So let's do that now. Okay, so you've just got your measurement and you've minus 6% for the stretch and now you need to find a replacement belt. Well, when you go looking for those replacement belts, one of the ways that you may see them listed is like this. Let's look at this example. It says here, rubber drive belt, 30 centimeters, full flat length. Now, if you were to go into the description for this belt here, you would see that in the description it says these are measured these are measured flat lung and not by diameter so what does that mean well what they're referring to here is the circumference and the circumference is basically if you take a circle imagine that's a belt and you mark one point on the circle if you go all the way around the circle and come back to the same point on its edge that is what we would call the circumference okay so remember that anytime you see them listed as flat length right they are talking about the circumference now another way that you may see these belts listed right is like this rubber drive belt 9.54 centimeters diameter so what are they talking about here what do they mean by that well the diameter is basically if you take a circle again imagine that's your belt and if you draw a line through its exact center then from one point of that line right from one point of that line to the other point of that line is what we what is referred to as the diameter the measurement the length of that line is referred to as the diameter okay now there's one other way that you may see these belts listed as well rubber drive belt 15 centimeter folded length so what does that mean well when they refer to it as the folded length all they mean is they've taken the circle or the belt they've chopped it in half right and they've measured one half of it okay and that's what they're giving you that's the measurement that they're giving you basically so if you wanted to work out what the unfolded length is all you do is you take the folded folded length and times it by two and that will give you the unfolded length or the circumference okay so bear that in mind those three examples that you saw earlier they were all of the same belt okay but they were measured in three different ways or three different types of measurements okay so we saw it listed as flat length we saw it listed as a diameter and we saw it listed as folded length and they're all the same belt but I want to put you in a, in, in a situation now let's say you have a, a service manual and the service manual says please replace the belt with a belt that has a diameter of X amount of centimeters now when you go to look for the replacement belts you only see them listed by their circumference what would you, what would you do in that situation because you now need to find out the diameter of that belt now there's an easy way to do that there's actually a formula that you can use the formula is if you take the circumference and you divide it by pi that will give you the diameter of that circumference so now you were able to work out the diameter from the circumference and you can see if that diameter matches the diameter that is listed in your service manual so here's another situation that you may find yourself in let's say for example you've just measured your circumference right so you know the circumference measurement that you need or that you're looking for but when you come to look for these belts you only see them listed by their diameter right so what are you going to do in this situation because now what you need to do is you need to find out the corresponding uh, diameter for that circumference that you've just measured right so there's a formula for that as well and in that situation what you do is you use the formula below diameter 
times pi will give you your circumference. So I believe that's quite straightforward. You've got your circumference, you go to the listings and you see them listed by diameter only and you want to work out the circumference from the diameter that's listed. So you use the formula below, diameter times pi and that will give you the circumference. Okay, so that's that out the way. Just for reference and just to clarify, this here is the pi symbol, right? And uh, if we take a, a popular phone or a popular calculator on a popular phone and if we turn the phone sideways then the pi symbol can be found or the pi key can be found right here okay so remember uh, when you want to work out the the circumference you times it by pi and when you want to work out the diameter you divide by pi okay so those are two important points just to bear in mind okay now if we take uh, today's example the measurement that we took today then the circumference of our belt is 11.28 centimeters the folded length of our belt is 5.64 centimeters or half of the circumference right and the diameter of our replacement belt will be 3.59 centimeters okay and then all you need is one other measurement and that is the thickness and you can easily measure that uh, across the belt and if you don't have the uh, the old belt then I'm going to show you later on how you can uh, get the measurement of the thickness of the belt that you need that thickness will always be listed in uh, when you go looking for the belts so you'll know whether you can match that up or not and I'm going to show you that in a minute how to how to take that measurement but what I'm trying to say is once you've got the circumference of the belt that you need right what you do is you work out the other measurements that are displayed here on the screen so from the circumference you work out the folded length you work out the diameter and uh, obviously you'll have the thickness and if you write these down right before you start going looking for a replacement belt then if any one of those measurements match the diameter the folded length or the circumference you've got your replacement belt right there and you can place your order the reason why I made this uh, this presentation is because when I was uh, trying to get my replacement belt I found it a bit confusing sometimes I saw them listed as the circumference sometimes I saw them listed as the folded length other times I saw them listed as the diameter and I thought well if somebody's doing this for the first time they may get confused and uh, that's why I put this presentation together for you right so there's only one other measurement that you need and that is the thickness and I specifically kept that out of the examples that I showed you earlier because I didn't want to confuse you but if we go back to the demonstration table I'm going to show you now how you can easily get the measurement of the thickness of the belt if you don't have the original belt so let's do that now right so if you have a look at this tool here this is what we call a uh, I'm just going to zoom in this is what we call a micrometer and it it is used to take very small and precise measurements and when you're dealing with the devices like this sometimes the belts are in the zero point millimeter range so 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.8 right and you want to make sure you you get the thickness right so what you do is uh, let's just say for example let's switch it on All right let's zero it out now if you have a look here if, if you have a look at this tip here I'll try and get it as close as I can for you and as you can see it's got very very sharp edges and you can easily use those edges right if you can get into the groove of the gear of one of the gears any one of them or the wheels then you can use this to get the measurement of the thickness of that groove and that will give you the thickness of the belt that you're looking for okay so let's do that now I know the thickness of this belt is 0 0.6 millimeters so you can see that it says 0 0.6 millimeters there and all you do is you take that sharp those sharp 
edges and you get into the groove right you get into the groove and then you can use this tool to measure the groove inside the wheel or the gear that the belt fits into okay and you can clearly see that says 0 0.6 millimeters right so that's how you take the measurement for uh, very small grooves or that's how we would do it with the use of a micrometer when you get into anything over like uh, a couple of millimeters then you can you can just measure it by by eye or with with a ruler it, it wouldn't it would you wouldn't need a um a precision tool like this this is for when you're going to very small very very small measurements okay so that's basically all there is to it now i just want to mention something else as well while i was refurbishing this um micro cassette player i also had some other issues nothing to do with the belt it was to do with uh, something else but i'm going to save that for the next video and uh, i'll tell you how i overcame that issue but for now you should have everything you need to replace your rubber drive belts well that's it for today's video we're going to wrap it up now and uh, until the next one as always bye for now and have a nice day